I would gladly bear any curse to save my homeland. Arthas. Prince Arthas Menethil, the only son of King Terranus Menethil II and Queen Leanne Menethil, was brought into the world four years before the start of the First War. Arthas experienced a childhood where the lands were desolated by war, the alliance was disintegrating, and darker clouds, despite everything, lingered not too far off. As a child, he became best friends with Varian Rin and frequently sparred with him. However, Arthas was less experienced. He looked as his future horse, Invincible, grew up. As a child, Arthas was trained for battle by Muradin Bronzebeard, the sibling of the dwarven king Magni Bronzebeard, and turned into a proficient fighter, while simultaneously took in the methods of the light under the tutelage of Uther the Lightbringer. He also developed a love interest with Jaina Proudmoore when she was remaining in Lordaeron onto her way to Dalaran, where she would study, to which Arthas offered to accompany her to. Some time later, Terranus had organized a political wedding for Arthas' sister Kalia with Lord Davil Prester. Kalia was distressed by the choice, and when Arthas attempted to quiet her, she wanted that Arthas would pick a significant other and the future queen of Lordran out of affection instead of political reasons. Arthas was introduced into the Knights of the Silver Hand at the young age of 19. The ceremony was held in the Cathedral of Light and Stormwind, and was attended by many noticeable figures such as Gen Greymane, Thoris Trollbane, Dalin Proudmore and his daughter Jaina, who Arthas had not seen since childhood. Archbishop Alonso's file led to the initiation procedure before four of the five original paladins, Uther, Tyrion Fordring, Sadan Death Rohan, and Gavin Rad the Dyer. Turalyon had been lost on the Alliance expedition, during which Arthas was presented the sacred warhammer called Light's Vengeance by Gavin Rad and had the ceremonial silver plates set upon his shoulders by Uther. While in Stormwind, Arthas visited the recently crowned King of Stormwind Varian Rin and sparred with him while recounting old memories, as well as the recently born Anduin Rin who gripped his finger. Arthas once visited Durnhold Keep, where he saw the acclaimed Orc Gladiator Thrall. He remained in the keep during the night and Aedalus sent Teretha to Arthas' chamber to satisfy him. However, Arthas had just a talk with her and he noticed that Teretha helped him to remind of Jada Proudmore, whom he had begun to fall in love with. Later on, he rode on Invincible only to have an accident, which caused Invincible to be dealt a mortal wound. Arthas had no other option than to kill his beloved steed in order to stop its suffering, which would haunt him for the rest of his life. Arthas met the only daughter of Admiral Proudmore, the sorceress Jaina, during his childhood. The relationship grew as friends first, and then romantically years later. They were very much in love with one another. Arthas once stayed in Dalaran, only to be with Jaina. During his visit, Antony disorganized a banquet for Arthas and Caelthus, who also happened to be there at the same time as Arthas. At the banquet, Arthas and Antony talked about the situation regarding the orc's strange inactivity, Terranus' health and well-being, as well as about Stormwind, the young Anduin Rin and Arthas' relationship status. Caelthus, who was also fond of Jaina, once caught Arthas and Jaina together under an arch as they were kissing, which angered him out of jealousy. Arthas paid the jealous elf prince no mind. Having developed into a strong, confident young man, Arthas was stubborn and somewhat arrogant. However, none could argue his courage and determination. Arthas came to be regarded one of the finest swordsmen in Lordaeron and was acclaimed for counterattacking and vanquishing the four Stroll warbands of Zulaman when they began attacking the settlements along the Quel'Thalassian border. Later on, Arthas invited Jaina to Lordaeron to celebrate the two festivals of Noble Garden and Hallow's End. During this time, Arthas revealed to the public that he is courting Jaina. Eventually, however, Arthas began to wonder whether the two of them were ready to be together. Arthas abruptly ended the relationship so Jaina could concentrate on her magical studies in Dalaran and Arthas could concentrate on his responsibilities to Lordaeron. Soon after, they would agree to rekindle their romance, but this was during the beginning of the Scourge invasion, an event that would change both of their lives forever. He held the position as one of the four members of the jury during the court of Tyrion Forging in Stratholm. Troubles began to stir in Lordran. Orcs broke free of their internment camps, and there was troubling news of a plague that had taken hold of the Northlands. Arthas and Uther were sent to Stranbrod to defend the town from Orcish raids. The young prince defeated the Black Drake Cyrenox to retrieve its heart for the dwarf Feranor Steeltoe to forge it into an orb of fire. Arthas used this magical item to help defeat the orcs and kill the Blackrock clan's blade master, leading the assaults. Be that as it may, Weeks after the fact, an increasingly vile danger arose in the form of the Plague of Undeath. Jaina and Captain Falric were sent to join Arthas, now 24 years old, in order to investigate the unusual plague. They battled an undead army at a plague-infested granary, 
they encountered the necromancer Kel'Thuzad in the town of Brill and pursued him to Anderhal, located in the Western Eastweld, currently known as the Western Plaguelands. Kel'Thuzad had already infected the stored grain in Anderhal and shipped it out to remote towns. Before Arthas executed him, Kel'Thuzad talked about Mal'Ganis, a Nethrazine demon who led the Scourge. Jaina and Arthas traveled north to stand up to him in Stratholme. Along the way, Arthas and Jaina stopped at Hearthglen village where they would have liked to rest. Instead, they were warned of an approaching army of undead. Arthas ordered Jaina to find Uther and seek his aid while he stayed behind to defend the town. Horrified, Arthas found that the plague was not only a means of mass murder, but instead the means of turning innocent townsfolk into undead abominations. Arthas' forces barely held out and were on the verge of defeat when Uther showed up with reinforcements and saved the village. While traveling to Stratholm, Arthas was met by the mysterious prophet Medivh. He gave him similar advice he gave Terranus to venture out west to Kalimdor. Arthas argued that his place was with his kin, his people, and vowed that he would not desert them. Janus suggested that the prophet might be right, but Arthas paid her no heed and proceeded to Stratholm. When he arrived, Arthas found that the grain had already been distributed and knew that the townspeople would soon become undead zombies. He ordered Uther and his knights to purge the entire city. Horrified, Uther reproached him by saying that he would not follow such an order even if Arthas were king at that point. Proclaiming that Uther had committed treason, Arthas disbanded the Knights of the Silver Hand. Several of his soldiers left with Uther, as did Jaina, while those that remained loyal to Arthas joined him in slaughtering the tainted townsfolk. As Arthas began to slay the citizens of Stratholme, he was met by Mal'Ganis himself, who was attempting to claim the souls of the townsfolk. Arthas worked to destroy them before Mal'Ganis could reach them. At last, Arthas demanded a final confrontation with the Dreadlord. Mal'Ganis slipped away, however, vowing to meet him in Northrend. Arthas then set fire to Stratholme. Something snapped in Arthas that day. His powerlessness to stop the plague sent him down the cold, lonely road he would soon follow. The fire still burned to this day. Arthas followed Mal'Ganis with a unit of his troops. They arrived a month later in Daggercap Bay, in the Howling Fjord, Northland. As they searched for a good spot to set up camp, Arthas' men came under gunfire before recognized by the Dwarven Explorers Guild. Arthas was surprised to have stumbled upon his old friend and former mentor, Muradin Bronzebeard. At first, Muradin assumed that Arthas was leading a rescue party sent to rescue his men, who had been attacked by the undead as they searched for the rune blade known as Frostmourne. Arthas admitted it was mere coincidence. Together, they then attacked and destroyed the nearby undead camp, but there was still no sign of Mal'Ganis. As Muradin and Arthas continued their search for Frostmourne, an emissary from Lordaeron arrived in a zeppelin and addressed Captain Luke Valenforth. He brought orders from Uther and Terranus, instructing Arthas and his men to return home. When Arthas returned to his base, his men had abandoned their posts and were making their way through the forest towards their boats. Arthas had no intention of leaving before Mal'Ganis was destroyed. With the help of some local mercenaries, he managed to reach and burn his own boats before his men got to them. When his men arrived, Arthas betrayed his mercenaries, accusing them of destroying his ships and the captain had them killed, much to the disgust of Muradin. Arthas told his men that they had no means of going home, and that the only way they were leaving Northland was through victory. Arthas and his troops proceeded to drag Tharon Keep in search of Frostmore. As he arrived, Mal'Ganis appeared to him and foretold his death. Arthas went to search for Frostmourne with Muradin, leaving his captain to guard the camp. Using an ancient waygate, Arthas, Muradin and a small group of men traveled to the area of the legendary Runeblade. Arthas was then confronted by the Guardian, a revenant, who tried to keep him away from Frostmourne, apparently for his own protection. The Guardian fell, and Arthas and Muradin went forward to collect their prize. Muradin, reading an inscription, reported that the blade was cursed and pleaded, Oh, leave it be, Arthas. Forget this business and lead your men home. But Arthas was unyielding. Arthas demanded the spirits of the cavern for the sword to be released from its icy prison, proclaiming that he would give anything or pay any price, if only they would let him save his people. When the weapon broke free, Muradin was struck by a rogue shard of ice. Arthas moved to help Muradin, but was prevented by the call of Frostmourne in his mind. Arthas discarded his holy warhammer, Light's Vengeance, then picked Frostmourne up and returned to his base, leaving Muradin for dead. With Frostmourne, Arthas defeated Mal'Ganis' army, destroyed his base, and finally confronted the demon. Mal'Ganis told him that the voice he was now hearing was that of the Lich King. However, Arthas replied that that voice was instructing him to destroy Mal'Ganis, much to the Dreadlord's surprise. Slaying the Dreadlord, 
Arthas fled into the frozen north, leaving his troops to fend for themselves. Arthas soon lost the last remnants of sanity. Arthas returned to Lordaeron months later, and the kingdom celebrated at the return of its champion. Flanked by Falrek and Marwyn, Arthas entered the imperial chamber and knelt down before the throne. After telling his father that he no longer needed to bear the weight of his crown, Arthas walked up to Terranus and ran Frostmourne through his heart. The king's bloodied, broken crown remains lost to this day. As he drew Frostmourne, Arthas recalled the words of his old friend Varian, describing his own father and King Lane being stabbed in the heart. Arthas fled the scene and traveled to the ball near Formstead. There he used his necromantic powers to raise his faithful steed, Invincible, into undeath, allowing it to serve as his mount once again. Weeks later, Arthas returned in the Vandermar village, a town in Lordaeron situated northeast of Lordemir Lake, at the bidding of his new master, the Lich King. There he met Tychondrius the Darkener, a dreadlord like Malganus. Thinking that the dreadlord was Malganus out for revenge, Arthas immediately threatened him, only to discover that his dreadlord had come to congratulate Arthas for his efforts. When addressed, Arthas said he no longer felt regret for any of his actions, though deep in his heart he knew that this was a lie. Tychondrius explained that the sword was designed to steal souls, and that Arthas' soul was the first one it had claimed. Arthas assembled the members of the vile Cult of the Damned that were hiding in Vandermar, and was aided by their magical abilities as he traveled to Anderhal, where he was going to recover Kel'Thuzad's corpse. He confronted the paladin guarding the crypt, Gavinrad the Dire, who had given Arthas his holy warhammer at his acceptance ceremony into the Silver Hand. After killing Gavinrad, he recovered the remains of the Necromancer. This brought Kel'Thuzad's ghost into being, and he secretly advised Arthas not to trust the Dreadlords. Arthas quietly contemplated this. Kel'Thuzad's remains were badly decomposed and needed to be taken to the magical Sunwell in Quel'Thalas to be revived. Tychondrius sent Arthas to recover a mystical urn, which could be used to transport Kel'Thuzad's remains. However, the urn was in the keeping of the Knights of the Silver Hand. Arthas killed two paladins, Balador the Bright, who survived, and Sage Truthbearer, who both condemned Arthas' betrayal. He then faced Uther the Lightbringer, who explained that the urn held the ashes of his father, King Terranus. The two engaged in a duel, with Uther initially having the upper hand, knocking Arthas down and sending Frostmourne flying from his hands. As Arthas awaited the killing blow, the sword seemed to find its own way into his hands, and he was granted more power by the Lich King. The battle had begun to turn in Arthas' favor, and Uther, covered in blood from his wounds, fell to his knees, telling Arthas he hoped there was a special place in hell waiting for him. Arthas replied that he intended to live forever before delivering the final blow. He seized the urn and threw away his father's ashes, which flew on him with the wind which burned his eyes and caused him to choke. Arthas then replaced the ashes with those of Kel'Thuzad, and began the long journey to Quel'Thalas. Arthas met heavy resistance from the elves, led by the ranger general Sylvanas Windrunner. Driving their forces before his undead army, he steadily pushed her people back in a path of destruction toward Silvermoon. Sylvanas tried to warn the elven capital of the coming of the Scourge, but Arthas destroyed her camps and killed the ranger general. To make her pay for her perceived disrespect towards him, Arthas corrupted her elven spirit, transforming it into a horrendous twisted form, a banshee, and enslaving her to the will of the Lich King, forcing her to slay her own people. Arthas, along with the marching armies of the Scourge, annihilated Silvermoon, leaving it in ruins. On the road to the Sunwell, he faced an Asterian Sunstrider, the aged High King of Quel'Thalas, and killed him with little struggle. Arthas then used the Sunwell to bring Kel'Thuzad back to life, reborn as an undead Lich. As the pair traveled to Alterac, Kel'Thuzad explained the full extent of the second invasion and the plans of the Lich King and the Scourge. Arthas and Kel'Thuzad went to the Alterac Mountains to destroy encampments of Blackrock clan orcs who had taken control of a demon gate, which the Lich would use to speak to the demon lord Archimond. The Scourge destroyed the orcs, and after Kel'Thuzad received orders from Archimond, they set out for the city of the world's mages, the city of Dalaran. Archimond instructed them to secure the spellbook of Medivh, which would allow Kel'Thuzad to summon Archimond into Azeroth. Despite the Kirintor's valiant efforts to repel the invasion, the Scourge fought through their magical defenses and fortifications, killed the Archmage Antonidas, who was also Jaina's mentor, and claimed the Book of Medivh. Arthas and his troops repelled the mage's fast counterattack as Kel'Thuzad began the long summoning of the Demon Lord. Once Archimond arrived, he proclaimed that the Lich King was of no further use to the Legion and Tychondrius was placed in command of the Scourge. Arthas was left to wonder what would happen to him and Kel'Thuzad, 
but the Lich replied that everything was going as the Lich King predicted. The pair disappeared as Archimonde took his revenge on the city, destroying Dalaran with a single powerful ritual. Arthas was next seen several months later in Kalimdor, where Tychonius was using the arcane power of the Skull of Gul'dan. Arthas told the recently freed demon hunter Illidan Stormrage how to claim the Skull's power as his own, with which he could destroy Tychonius. Illidan agreed to his plan, and Arthas disappeared again. Archimonde left three dreadlords behind in the ruined palace gardens of Lordran to ensure that the nation remained under control and to watch over the cunning servants of Ner'zhul. When the demon lord was defeated, however, they were not initially aware of it. This changed several months later, when Arthas returned to reclaim his throne. He threatened the dreadlords, who immediately fled, and then called Sylvanas and Kel'Thuzad to his side. Together, they crushed the remaining human refugees in the area, who were led by the paladins Halak the Lifebringer and Margroth the Defender and Dargren the Orc Slayer. However, during the climax of the battle, Arthas had a painful seizure and felt the Lich King calling out to him. Despite his diminished powers, Arthas fought on until all the remaining humans were killed. Little did Arthas know that the Lich King's power had dwindled to the point that Sylvanas was no longer under his control. In secret, she attended a meeting with the three dreadlords, who told her that the Lich King's power was waning, and so the time had come to claim her revenge. Arthas was ambushed in the capital city, and was forced to collect what loyalists he could find and fight his way through the dreadlords' forces, including the powerful abomination Bloodfeast. As he arrived on the city's limit, he was saved by a group of banshees, who told him that Sylvanas had sent them to take him somewhere safe. However, as they neared an empty spot in the forest, Arthas received another vision from the Lich King, who told him he'd been betrayed. Sylvanas then appeared and shot him with a paralyzing arrow. Kel'Thuzad stepped in and chased her off at the last moment, but the Lich King's mental cries pierced Arthas's mind. He was told to return to Northrend, for demonic forces, later revealed to be Illidan and his Naga, were working to destroy the Frozen Throne and end the self-proclaimed King's reign. Immediately, Arthas prepared his fleet and set sail for Northrend, leaving Kel'Thuzad behind to watch over Lord Rome. Three weeks later, Arthas arrived at the familiar coast of Northrend and found himself being attacked by the Blood Elves led by Kel'Thuz, wanting revenge for the kingdom's destruction. Arthas was unexpectedly saved by a large Crypt Lord who introduced himself as Enuparak, the former king of Zhul'nurub. Kel'Thuz warned that though the initial scouting force may have fallen, their main army would not be so easily defeated before teleporting away to safety. Arthas worried that he might be right and that they would never reach Icecrime Citadel before Illidan. But Anubarak thought differently. He suggested that they delve into the Shattered Kingdom of Vajilnarob using the underground passageway to beat Illidan to the glacier. Seeing little other choice, Arthas agreed. Anubarak also suggested raiding the collection of Saffron, an ancient blue dragon and servant of Malagos, and equipping themselves with the dragon's treasures. Not only did they slay the dragon, but Arthas used what power he had left to raise Saffron into a powerful frostworm. When he came to the doors of Vajilnarob, Arthas found himself being fired upon by dwarves, who revealed themselves to be the followers of Muradin who had remained in Northrend when their leader appeared to die. Now, they were led by Muradin's second-in-command, Belgun Flamebeard. Leaving Saffron outside, Arthas fought through not only Belgun's dwarves, but also the Nerubian survivors, as he delved deeper into the broken spider kingdom. Anubarak's aid was invaluable, as he bypassed many traps which would have cut Arthas' stay fatally short. As Arthas confronted Belgun, the dwarf warned that the shifting earth had released an ancient evil from below the kingdom. As Arthas and Anubarak delved deeper into the kingdom, that evil became apparent. The Faceless Ones, a powerful, vicious race thought only to exist in legend. Arthas and Anubarak even managed to defeat the incredibly powerful Forgotten One. As they made their way to the upper kingdom, an earthquake collapsed, part of the passage they were in, separating Anubarak from Arthas. The young king had to rely upon his wits to see himself through several daunting traps before Anubarak dug his way to Arthas. Once reunited, the Crypt Lord complimented the young Death Knight, saying how he now understood why Ner'zhul had chosen him as his champion. As they climbed out of the Zhul'nurub, the Lich King contacted Arthas once again and explained that he was losing his power because the Frozen Throne had cracked and energy was flowing from it. Ner'zhul replenished Arthas' powers, knowing that he would need them in the coming battle. When they finally reached the surface, they immediately had to battle with Illidan's forces. Vash's Naga and Kale's Blood Elves were there to contest Arthas' minions at every turn. Arthas, with Anubarak's help, battled his way through the forces and activated the four ice cram obelisks around the glacier, opening the doors to the frozen throne. However, Illidan was waiting for him. Arthas warned Illidan to leave Azeroth and never return. Illidan refused and this initiated a short but intense duel, with Illidan accidentally leaving himself open. 
Arthas pressed the advantage, slicing open the demon hunter's chest with Frostmourne. Illidan collapsed in the snow as Arthas turned towards the gates of Icecrown, triumphant. Arthas entered the hollow glacier and saw a winding pinnacle chained to the ice. As he walked up the stairs towards his destiny, the voices of those he had forsaken flooded through his mind. He heard Merdin Bronzebeard, Uther, and Jaina calling out to him, yet he ignored them, continuing his ascent. Finally, he reached the pinnacle and before him he saw an icy cask. Inside was a suit of armor, arranged as if seated on a massive throne. Now only one voice spoke to him, the rasping whisper of Ner'zhul. Return the blade. Complete the circle. Release me from this prison. With a great cry of strength, Arthas brought Frostmourne to bear against the Lich King's icy prison, and with a haunting scream, the frozen throne exploded. The shards of crystal shattered on the ground. With Ner'zhul's thorny helm at his feet, Arthas leaned forward, picked it up, and placed the incredibly powerful artifact on his head. Now, Ner'zhul's voice echoed within his mind. We are one. In that moment, Ner'zhul and Arthas' spirits fused into a single mighty being just as the Lich King had always planned. Arthas, as a single being, ceased to exist, now only half of one of the most powerful entities Azeroth had ever known, the new Lich King. While he dreamed, Arthas banished his humanity and suppressed Ner'zhul's spirit, allowing him to become the dominant personality of the Lich King. As the Lich King, Arthas launched another Scourge invasion on Azeroth, provoking a counteroffensive in Northland by the Horde, Alliance, Argent Crusade and Knights of the Ebon Blade. In doing so, he lured powerful heroes to Northland and placed many challenges before them, seeking to take out the weak and make the strong question their own morality. He planned to raise the world's greatest fighters as his new champions, and use them to launch attacks on their homelands, in a reflection of his own journey. His plan nearly succeeded, until a group of adventurers led by Tyrion Fordring finally ascended to the Frozen Throne and battled with him after Horde, Alliance and Ashen Verdict the forces assaulted Icecrown Citadel. The Lich King froze Tyrion in a block of ice, and in the middle of the battle, he killed the adventurers in a single mighty blow. Ultimately, the Lich King's plans were stopped, when just as he was about to raise the would-be heroes into undeath, Tyrion called upon the light and freed himself from the ice, shattering Frostmourne with the Ashbringer, releasing all the souls inside, including Arsus' soul. The Lich King was severely weakened, and Tyrannus resurrected the adventurers who had defeated him alongside Tyrion. After striking a mortal blow against the Lich King, the Helm of Domination was knocked off of Arthas' head as he reached for it in desperation before collapsing on the ground. As he lay dying, the spirit of his father appeared before him, as the glow brought on by his fusion with Ner'zhul faded from his eyes. With his soul freed and his connection to the Lich King severed, Arthas was returned to his former self, albeit in his dying moments. Arthas asked his father if it was over, to which Terranisma replied, At long last, no king rules forever, my son. Arthas said that he only saw darkness before him, with his eyes rolling back and his hand falling lifelessly to the ground, ending the life of Arthas Menethil, once and for all. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.